we have lots of data to work with in our experience that the shadow is real. What am I talking about when I say the shadow? Well, I'm going to share with you a little bit of my frames of reference, my assumptions, and um, we'll go from there. One of those assumptions is that uh, religion, spirituality, and psychology are not mutually contradictory. They're actually pretty complementary at times and uh, offer each other perspectives that enhance the other. So for me, the idea of bringing Jesus' teachings together with uh, Jungian psychology and in an integral sense, integral psychology, makes a lot of sense. Again, it's that non-dual way of understanding that grace builds on nature. And nature is in some ways even then flowing from grace. Um, that psychology is a way of uh, framing so many of the issues and studying them with a kind of rigor. And that's important. And a lot of the uh, postmodern uh, edging toward late rationalist way of thinking is you don't pay attention to data anymore, or at least not hard data. I think it's important to be empirical, especially about something like this. And at the same time, science has limits, my friends. And it's really important as uh, postmodern people to acknowledge those limits. So some of what we'll talk about today in terms of shadow will not fit in categories that psychology have given to us nor may it fit entirely in the integral model. There are some mysterious things in the world which no mind is capable of comprehending. And there are frightening things in the world um, that really can't be uh, diagnosed and understood in conventional ways. Uh, and I think we need to, s to sort of give space for God to be working in and through all of that, okay, uh, on, on the edges of things. <coughs> Um, another assumption, I, I think that Jesus offers us a whole range of ways to be in relationship with this phenomenon that I keep referring to as shadow. Um, and primarily, he recommends doing the work on ourselves first. Though this is not usually our first instinct, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we ask our family members and our friends, and who have we been trying to work on? Everybody else, okay? But in these teachings, Jesus is really bringing the work back to us. Um, and, and to do it with a sort of joyfulness and a spirit of discovery, uh, because it's how we become more and more human. On the back of uh, this uh, series of pages, you see these great Escher drawings. And in one of them, you see this monastery, a little bit like St. Malo's, and you see all these monks traipsing around. And it's hard to see exactly um, which direction they're going, up or down. But often in the spiritual life, the way to ascend is actually to go down. Right? In, the, uh, in the Greek tragedies and the Greek stories, the expression for this going down of the heroes and the heroines is katabasis. It's the descent. It's often uh, portrayed as the hero going to the underworld and dealing with a confrontation with hell, with death, with their deepest fears, in the dark wood, alone, and facing those fears in such a way that when they return from that descent, they're more whole, they're more alive, they're more filled with passion and freedom for the service of their brothers and sisters. So this whole notion that the spiritual life that Jesus is uh, sharing with us involves this death to the self, this willingness to go into this descent, in order that we can come out the other side. The only thing is, and Richard kind of adverted this to this today, when you're in the middle of the dark wood, there's no telling what's on the other side. And it is an act of faith and hope that there is another side. Okay? Maybe some of you have had that experience already. Um, when I went through it in the summer of 2000, 